bringing the people behind our food to life. The asparagus is crisp to where it breaks, wherever it breaks, from there below it's dental floss, so you want to throw that away. And if you put it in water, it'll soak up water and it'll gain more weight than you bought. A lot of people would like to be a small farmer, but uh, the reason I'm able to do it is a good foundation laid by my father. Uh, agriculture being in the veins and, and, and knowing what can be done. The biggest experience that I have is that I've done large-scale agriculture and I can know how to cut corners and make a small piece of ground work and get it done efficiently and economically. The different hats you have to wear as a small farmer, you start out the day and every day is different. You look at the weather, you decide what needs to be done next. Like this morning, we, we looked and it was, it was light rain instead of a heavy rain and we decided that we could get ready for planting pole beans. If it would have been too much rain, I would have had to switch gears and decide, well, we need to start harvesting for market. Radishes. French breakfast, uh, cherry, uh, ping pong, amethyst. Some of them are hotter, some of them are sweeter and crisper. And then we need to wash up for market. One of the chefs called and then his order comes in. So now you got to decide to get the order ready. We have to order the seed and then we plant the seed and then we transplant the seed and you're always looking three to four weeks in the future. With the roots being nice and white like that, this is ready for immediate planting. When they need to be transplanted, they need to go and you have to think of a greenhouse that's going to be open because you can't depend on the weather here. This is Cascadia sugar pod peas. They're developed out of Oregon State. What's the temperature in here now? Probably 60, 65. And what do you think is it outside? 45, 50. What keeps me farming is the challenge of growing something in a season that it's not really conducive to doing, but it can be done with a little bit of trickery and, and making things go. We're inside of a greenhouse here. This is a greenhouse that's got uh, apricots and cherries and plums behind me uh, they're in bloom it's the middle of March there's snow on the outside to the greenhouse here the bees are working we've saw a few bees and a few hummingbirds working the, the blooms and this allows those crops to be harvested six weeks ahead of anything else in the valley here because we're, we're generally above freezing and the greenhouse adds 10 to 15 degrees during the day it takes the wind out of the equation and it takes a uh, some of the insects and some of the birds that are, can be a problem and uh, gives you an early harvest. That's the biggest reason that I went to greenhouses is because I could schedule what I was doing more so than if you're a whim of the weather you might never be planting until June some years and then you won't have anything for all of those hungry customers out there. This is something that you won't get at the grocery store will be the, the purple Brussels sprout. We'll be bunching that and uh, bringing that down to the market. You kind of get a real reward from selling those crops as, as people go, are excited and thrilled to have stuff out of season and early. And Oh, there's times when the, the winds are blowing and your guts are churning because the plastic's flapping and, and ripping off the greenhouses. But uh, then when you look in at one of these houses and you look at how everything just comes out looking really pretty and perfect and you're going, wow, I did that. You know, keeping family farms going um, into the next generation is going to take all of us buying what they're growing and really understanding and supporting um, what it is they're doing.